I'm Martin Anderson. On this Wednesday morning, you're tuned to WNCW, and Alexa Rose has joined us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> it's great to have you back here. It's great to be back. Thanks for getting up good and early. Oh, yeah. Um, you've been in Asheville for a long time, Alexa, but uh, big news, you've moved up to Virginia. It's true. Yep. <laughs> so were you in Asheville last night, though? or I, I was in I was down in Brevard last night, okay, which cause... is a place I've spent a lot of time in summers past. It was good to be back there. Oh, good. Good. Yeah. yeah, you had a show at 185 King Street. Yeah, a real special room. Yeah, yeah. I need, need to go there. Uh, they've got a great lineup, I must say, these days of great folks that we love here at WNCW. Yeah. So I'm glad you had a show. Uh, so you were maybe there last night, and then you come to Spindale this morning. But... Yep. Thank you for getting up so early and coming here this oh, morning. Oh, yeah. It is a beautiful drive. Good. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're in the midst of a really busy week of a lot of shows in our area. I saw you in Hendersonville last, uh, what was that, Thursday? I already feel so long ago. I know. With all sorts of live music that's just erupting lately yeah. in our region. Um, so you did that Rhythm and Brews show. Yeah, Rhythm and Brews. Aaron Burdett and his Fun band. One. And then yeah. you, you for that live. Yeah, you were playing right there on, on Main Street, Hendersonville. Yeah. Yeah, and I love Aaron Burdett's songs, so that was a real treat for us, too, to get to hear his set. Yeah, yeah. and then uh, you played uh, the Reeves Theater in Elkin, uh, mm-hmm. I guess, uh, on the next night or something. Mm-hmm. And uh, Brevard last night, and two more shows in our area this week in, in North Carolina before you head back home to Virginia. Yeah. All right. So this is like a you're from Virginia, and you kind of moved back to, to where you grew up? Yeah, I did. I moved to uh, the town I grew up in, and I also... Uh, Moved into the house I grew up in. All right. Which has been interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. (laughs) (laughs) Kind of trying to help my family fix it up and uh, just be closer to them, too, for a little bit. And just with touring so much, trying to escape Asheville rent a little bit. Right. Right. I don't know if I I knew this, but I kind of pictured your house in Virginia, your family home, is is like an old home. Mm -hmm. Maybe you mentioned that when you were in Studio B. not too long ago, I guess sometime earlier this year or something. And maybe you mentioned that. Yeah. So, um, so you're it there. Is. Yeah. All right. It's probably what you would picture. How old is it? <laughs> I think it was built in the 30s. Okay. Yeah. And it's got, it needs some, it needs some love. Uh huh. It's a cool house. All right. Yeah. So you moved up there, but uh, I mean, you know, other stuff still the same, right? You're still going to be making music like yeah. you're doing this week, performing around. And... Absolutely. It's been nice, actually, to. To step away from Western North Carolina and now come back and spend really intentional time here instead of just being tempted to be a hermit like I usually am. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, you're more on the introverted side. Yeah. yeah. A lot of music fans will be surprised to find that a lot of musicians, a lot of folks who perform on stage are actually introverted. Mm-hmm. What? No, you love being around people because look, you're in front of all these people and you're bearing your heart and soul with these songs or or acting or something. But actually, no, uh, you know. It's, yeah, uh, it's true. That's the worst part about it. <laughs> <laughs> but but we all love writing. We all love um, making music and making art and sharing it with other people and the connection it lets us feel. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. right. Cool. Yeah. So uh, you're playing tonight uh, at the Gray Eagle in Asheville with Travis Book, yeah. the, the infamous String Dusters, the bassist yeah. and songwriter with them. He's been doing this Happy Hour series for a good while, kind of throughout the pandemic, I guess. Yeah, and it blows my mind um, that he just absorbs all these songs every week and shows up and puts on a wonderful show. We kind of had a test run last night in Brevard and... It went wonderfully. We had a really great time. So for those that don't know Travis Book's Happy Hour series, uh, it's uh, you guys are going to be sharing songs together on stage, some mm-hmm. covers, some songs of your own. Yeah, that's it. All and we're right. going to have Julian Pinelli playing fiddle. Julian Pinelli, he's a great He's fiddle. incredible. Yes. Yeah. And an Asheville native, an actual yeah, native an of Yeah, an actual Asheville. native of Asheville. <laughs> yeah, and the chemistry of what they're um, doing together is really cool. So good. I would encourage folks to get out to this show if you can because it's a really special collaboration. All right. One night only. Yeah, the right. Great Eagle. <laughs> <laughs> the Great Eagle tonight. And uh, Alexa Rose, folks, is also playing tomorrow night in Highlands at the little place called the Highlander Mountain House. Yes. All right. Yes. That's and tomorrow that would be a more intimate, just me sharing songs and stories. Cool. And it's way out there. So if you want to drive an hour and a half from the Asheville area, you can come out to that stay the night 
It's not way out there if you live around Highlands, Cashiers. You're right. It's the local venue, it's folks. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> well, let, let's hear a song. You've got your guitar, and we'd love to hear a couple songs. Yeah. Alexa Rose here on WNCW. What do you want to do? Um, I'll do one called Haywood. I actually wrote this after a night I had at the Great Eagle, so it feels close to Asheville and that place we all love so much, the Great Eagle. a kettle in the dark I heard him playing in the park where the tender magnolias meet neon and crow wasn't playing for a crowd and he was not playing loud and I kept on walking on but it sure felt like a vision when he closed his eyes to see Gave me some kind of religion But there's no name for the thing Well, the darkest time the winner in the room Don't they blush like a woman the first time you saw And your love has many colors Some do shine some are duller There's no rush to paint them all Cause it sure feels like a vision If you close your eyes to see and it's some kind of religion but there's no name for the thing It's a song called Haywood from Alexa Rose, and it's live here on WNCW in our little air studio uh, from the album Headwaters, one of our uh, favorite songs on that album. And not just because we thought maybe it takes place in our area, as in Haywood <laughs> Avenue in Asheville. I just kind of had a hunch that maybe it had something to do with that. There's a lot of there's a lot of songs that take place in this neck of the woods, and yeah. I'm just better at hiding some of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's kind of a key to a good songwriter. Sometimes just kind of sneak in little things and maybe not make it too obvious. Yeah. To, to make the listener wonder, well, what was that about? Mm -hmm. Does that happen to you sometimes? Someone will come up to you and say, like, I love your song about thus and such and thus and such. And you're like, okay, well, it wasn't really about that, but I'm glad you like it. Yeah, totally. I mean, for me, that's kind of the point. That's what I love about, about songs. Um, and I like to leave things kind of ambiguous so that people can find their own story in it. Um, and, you know, there's no wrong analysis of a song to me. It's like whatever it means to you 
is right for you. Yeah, very yeah. good. Well, these songs on this this most recent album of yours, Headwaters, uh, you wrote, uh, I think you wrote it that they were, it was, uh, the record was a tremendous spark in the ether of a dark year. So, oh, yeah, because you know, I, I assume this was during, dramatic of me. <laughs> well, no, yeah, it, <laughs> and, it was though. Yeah, it was. Um, we recorded it in 2020. There you go. So, so we know what that was, was going just on. A that gift year. in itself to be able to make anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And did you uh, you recorded in Memphis? Yeah, right? Memphis. My second record done yeah. in Memphis with the same crew. Uh huh. Yeah. And what's the crew? I, I recognize a couple of names. You have uh, well, Will Sexton. He's yeah, a great guitarist. Great we like guitarist. And uh, uh, Clay Jones. He's a, Clay Jones. a more bluegrass guitarist. Um, maybe? Yeah, he was mostly he was mixing. Okay. And, yeah, and he and Bruce Watson were producing it, and um, we had Mark Stewart on the bass, and uh, yeah. Somebody's played drums on it. My friend Will McCarley's on there. Yeah. How did you find this crew and uh, and the Memphis location and such? Um, I so I met them all several years ago when I uh, made Medicine for a Living, and I just got connected with everyone through Bruce Watson, who owns the studio and the label that these records came out on. Is that Fat Possum? It's sort no. of an umbrella of Fat Possum called Big Legal Mass. Okay. And they put out right. a lot of gospel and blues. It's a great little record label based in Oxford, Mississippi to dig into. I know Fat Possum has, has like focused on like great, great blues, like good, dirty blues and stuff, yeah. good stuff. And then I feel like they did kind of branch out. And then Big Legal Mess is what, uh, more of the uh, gospel and blues as well? Yeah. And I think a lot of it like local to, to Memphis. Um but yeah, I don't know how I got thrown in <laughs> with all those cool people, but I am glad that I did. <laughs> yeah, 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 terrific. Uh, yeah, Headwaters uh, just turned out wonderfully. Um, this Thanks. Really nice collection of songs, and uh, I think you've written about Headwaters. I think uh, someone at the the Rhythm and Bruce show at Hendersonville kind of mentioned it when they were bringing you on stage, read yeah. a line about it, the inspiration yeah. of it. Maybe you can distill into a nutshell for our listeners why you named the album Headwaters. Um, there were just a lot of recurring water themes in the songs it wasn't something i planned but when the album started to come together i was kind of like oh hey like there's a lot of we didn't know what we were going to call the record and um and i was like there there was like a whole night where my manager and i were just trying to figure out what the title should be and then i was like thinking about the record in the shower and i was like oh there's water in all the songs <laughs> So, right. <laughs> yeah, and I think um, Headwaters in particular, we pulled that. I pulled that word from um, the song Pale Golden Flowers, which is a song about my great grandparents. Um, and the line specifically in that song was, All of my rivers come back, headwaters. The word headwaters in particular has meant something to me since I was in college and went to this uh, gathering uh, called Elk. Park Community Headwaters Day. Mm. I think I'm getting that right. Mm. I don't know. But that was when that was the first time I'd heard the word headwaters. And so it's always been tied up in community and in, in small town community in the mountains for me in this way that probably, you know, no one else would think that. But there, there's just something really sentimental about the word in general. I felt like it, it tied all the songs together in that way. I think that's pretty brilliant, really, to think of headwaters as kind of like a, I don't know a compass to set your 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 focus on and, yeah. and to expand it beyond just the um, the concept of you know where rivers and streams come from to apply it to to yeah. us humans and how we build communities. Thanks. Yeah, smart.